Okay, so topic number three, intersection and union. This is the third topic in set theory. Remember that first topic was just the puzzles and games. The second one, we started talking about sets and set theory, talking about sets and subsets, um, disjoint sets, um, and uh, figuring out uh, Venn diagrams based on information. Uh, we're going to talk about a specific topic in set theory called intersection and unit, or union. Um, and uh, this is, the, if you think about the, the Venn diagrams we looked at this morning, um, or in the earlier lesson, there was no overlap except for that first circle that we looked at. But when we started really analyzing it, there was no overlap. So we're going to um, look at ones where we have intersection and union of sets. So let's start with this. If a card is drawn from a standard deck of cards, it will be from one of our four suits, clubs, spades, hearts, or diamonds. So <clears throat> when we look at these, uh, we, we're gonna ask some questions, okay? So looking at these, we wanna know how many cards are hearts? So, and so this was number of cards that are hearts. So N that are hearts. And if you look, there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Okay? If you're not familiar with cards, there's a whole deck drawn there right for you. When we look at this, we have 26 black, 26 red. We have our face cards. We have our suits, clubs, spades, hearts, and diamonds. Okay, so we have all those cards, right? Um, so thinking about that, we say how many cards are clubs? Well, number of clubs, again, we have 13 cards that are clubs. Okay. Um, how many cards are hearts or clubs? So this is uh, the term that we use for, or this is the symbol that we use to represent either or, okay? So they're either hearts or clubs, okay? Um, so it's this little up, 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 uh, <clears throat> it's a little, it's like a U. So number, number of cards that are either hearts or clubs and we have 13 of each so we have 26 okay um, <clears throat> we could also go number of hearts or clubs and we could go it's equal to number of hearts plus the number of clubs and we would get our 26 Okay, we can just add them together. Okay. <clears throat> Sorry. A uh, brief pause while I do some thinking. Okay, draw the next part says draw a Venn diagram showing cards that are hearts or clubs. Uh, Right, so we're gonna draw this Venn diagram. Now, when we draw it, we're gonna have our hearts and our clubs. So this is our hearts. And I'm actually gonna make my circle red too, just cause hearts are red. Okay, so in there I would have the ace of hearts, the two of hearts, the three of hearts, dot, 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 dot. Uh, all the way up to the king of hearts, okay? You can write them all in if you want. And then for my clubs, I'd have my ace of clubs, my two of clubs, my three of clubs, dot, 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 all the way up to the king of clubs. And I know there's 13 in each. You'll notice there's no overlap 
they're separate from each other, but this would be our hearts and clubs, okay? How many cards are diamonds? Well, N diamonds is 13. How many are face cards? Well, let's go take a look. My face cards, if I look at them, they're these, and when I count them all up, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So my face cards, I have, so my number of, and I'll call it F, is 12. Okay? Now it says how many diamonds are, or how many cards are diamonds or face cards? Again, there's that word or right? So I want to know the number of diamonds or face cards. So let's figure that out, okay? Um, so let's take a look back up here. When we highlighted the first time, we highlighted all the ones that were um, <clears throat> face cards, but now we want just diamonds or face cards, or we want diamonds and face, or or face cards. So uh, we've got all our diamonds, right? And I have my face cards. Now there's a bit of an overlap, right? There's those three diamond face cards. So I have my 12 face cards, and then I have these additional 10 diamonds. Okay, so it's a little bit num different than adding them together. Okay, I can't just add those together. Uh, I can't add like the 13 plus the 12. I have to think about the fact that I have overlap between the two of them. So I actually have 22. So why does this work? Well, that's because in that situation, I have three cards that are both. So if I had my 13 for my diamonds plus my 12 for my face cards, and then I subtracted the three that were both, I would get 22. So I have to think in, about that overlap, right? Now, if I draw a Venn diagram showing that, this is what happens. I have my diamonds, I have my face cards, right? Um, so I've got my face cards here and my diamonds here. Now, I've got my jack of hearts, queen of hearts, King of Hearts, my Jack of, of uh, Spades, my Queen of Spades, I should have done the hearts in red, and my King of a Spades, and then I have my Jack of Clubs, my Queen of Clubs, my King of Clubs. So those are the nine face cards there. Um, I'm going to make these red because it'll make me happy. Okay, and then I have my Jack of Diamonds, my Queen of Diamonds, and my King of Diamonds. They are belonging to both groups. Then here in my diamonds, I have Ace, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. We can assume that these are all diamonds, okay? I just don't want to draw all the diamonds, okay? So I have the 10 other diamonds there. Now, when we see that intersection, that overlap, so to speak, it's easier to see that there are only 22. But it's important when we're talking about our sets that we're not counting that three twice, okay? So here's some information about this. Sets that are not disjoint share common elements. So these are not disjoint sets, they have some overlap. An intersection of sets is the set of elements that are common to two or more sets. In set notation, we use this cool little symbol to mean the intersection of sets A and B. The union of sets is the sets of all the elements in two or more sets. In set notation, sorry, I touched the wrong button. This means union of sets A and B. So those are, those are the different symbols that we have. 
The number of elements in the union of two sets can be calculated using the principle of inclusion and exclusion. And here's the, here's the thing, ladies and gentlemen. We have this formula, but you could also use your common sense. You could also sketch a Venn diagram showing your overlap to help you if you don't want to use the formula. But this is a formula. Basically, it meant it solves for the union of A and B by adding the number of elements in A to the number of elements in B and then subtracting the number of elements that are common to both. So like it would subtract that extra three so that we don't count those twice. We do not want to count that overlap twice, right? So we use this principle to avoid that. In set notation, a backslash B means it's in A, but not in set B. Okay, so if we have this symbol here, means we say something is in set A, but not in set B. Okay, that's a little set notation there for you. Let's do some examples. Um, I like this stuff. I like anything that keeps me organized, and this stuff certainly is good organizational tools and a lot of it helps you solve problems too okay so <clears throat> let's do some work in an alberta school there are 14 grade 12 students of these students 12 play or six play volleyball and seven play basketball there are three students who do not play either sport the following venn diagram represents the set of students so the set is up here S, all grade 12 students, okay? Now, we have, we know our Venn diagrams are gonna overlap, okay? So we have for our volleyball and our basketball. Now we also know there are three students who don't play either sports, right? We have six that play volleyball and seven that play basketball. So that means if we have uh, 13 in total, right? Or no, 14 in total, my apologies. I have 14 students in total, three of whom do not play anything. So 14 minus three means 11 are playing the sports. Okay, that means we have to find a way to make those six and seven basketball players work to play both sports, okay? So this circle has to have six and this one has to have seven. Now we have to figure out <clears throat> the overlap so that six, because six plus seven does not equal 14. So the overlap is going to be whatever extra is there because they're counted twice so six plus seven or sorry six plus seven does not equal 11 my apologies again right six plus seven actually equals 13 so that means there's two students who play both okay so two have to be in the overlap session section if the total for volleyball is six and two are over here that means only four just play volleyball if the total for basketball is seven and two are there, that means that only five just play basketball. So you have to do a little bit of juggling, figure out your numbers, um, uh, and, and figure out how much is gonna overlap, okay? Are the set of volleyball players and the set of basketball players disjoint? Are they? If you added the number of basketball to volleyball players, if you added them, are you going to have the total? No. We also have overlap. They add up to more than the total. Because we have overlap, okay? So they are not disjoint. Really, the only way that you couldn't be it couldn't be disjoint because of that two in the overlap. 
Describe how you can determine the number of students who play volleyball only, basketball only, and both volleyball and basketball. Well, we kind of did that. We looked at, we had we used the total number to figure out uh, and compared it to the number of kids who played sports to figure out what that overlap number must be, okay? How many students play only volleyball and how many only play basketball? Well, isn't it nice that we have this Venn diagram done? <laughs> So they play volleyball, but not basketball, is just that four right there. And they play basketball, but not volleyball. It's the five right there, okay? And we put all the numbers in the diagram already. So let's talk about what each part looks, what, what each part means. Okay, so looking here, Um, the union of basketball and volleyball. So, uh, so it's, they play either basketball or volleyball. Okay. Or both. So they are playing students playing one or both sports. Right? Remember that ups, that U means or. Describe the complement of the union of basketball and volleyball. So what is prime? So it's all the people that are not playing a sport, right? Uh, so it's students playing neither sport. That's those three that are there. And remember, we already determined that there were 11 kids playing basketball um, or volleyball or both. Describe the intersection of B and V. So the intersection, that's the overlap, is students who play both. And that equals 2. That, if we look at our diagram, is that little part in the middle. Okay? Is number of basketball plus number of volleyball equal to the uh, number, uh, the union of basketball and volleyball? Basketball or volleyball? Is it? Hmm. So is this a true statement? Well, let's see. Basketball is 7 plus 6. Does it equal 11, which is basketball or volleyball students? No. This equals 13. Basketball and volleyball uh, are disjoint in this statement and they're not in real life, okay? So it's not correct. It forgets about, forgets about the intersection, the overlap, okay? So you kind of have to watch your numbers, okay? Those of you who like sorting and organizing, this is the unit for you. Okay, Jamal's first survey was on January 4th, where he surveyed 34 people at his gym. He learns that 16 people do weight training three times a week, 21 people do cardio training three times a week, and six people do neither, okay? Megan added 16, 21, and six to get 43. Is this correct? Hmm, explain or why or why not. Well, let's see. He actually, if you look up here, he surveyed 34 people, right? So what's going on there is that this is not correct because some people do both cardio and weight training. 
so she's not taking into consideration the overlap. So let's figure out our Venn diagram that represents this data. So looking here, we're going to scroll it up a little bit. We've got to make sure we have our data. We'll get our little pen to work here. Mm -hmm. So we have 34 people. That's our, our the, the world that we're looking at. We have a circle for weightlifting. We have a circle for cardio. They overlap. There's some that do both. There are six people who do neither, so they're out here. So between weight and cardio, there has to be 34 minus 6, which is equal to 28. So the 28 people do one or both. So that tells me that uh, from this, these have to total 28. Okay, so I'm just going to make that note. I might delete that later. Okay. Now, um, if I take, he's got in his data here, 16 and 21. Well, 16 plus 21 equals 37. Clearly, 37 is a lot more than 28. So what we do is we take that 37 and we subtract 28 that we got over here. And we're going to get 9. 9 is the number who do both. So 9 will be the number that goes in the overlap. Now, we can figure out the other numbers. Cardio, the total for cardio was, if we look at our data, is uh, um, 21. So 21 minus 9 will give us our number for cardio. 21 minus 9 equals 12. So this equals 12, okay? We've got our 9 here. Here, for weight training, we learned that uh, 16 people do weight training. So 16 minus 9 equals... 7. So let's just make sure we got this right. So this is what we did here and this is what we did here to come up with our numbers. Just double check. 7 plus 9 equals 16. That's how many weight train. 9 plus 12 equals 21. That ma that's how many do cardio cardio. If we add 7 plus 9 plus 12, they equal our 28 that we assume down below. It's a little bit of juggling with numbers, but it's we can do it. We can figure it out if we just think about it logically. Logic, it's such a good thing. Okay? Now, Jamal did another survey. That Jamal, he's a nutty guy. He likes to do surveys. He surveyed 27 people at his gym, learned that 10 people do weight training three times a week, 14 people do cardio training, and three people do neither. So, let's try this one out. So, in total, for our second survey, is 27 people. We know that we have some that do cardio and some that do weight training. So, I think I put weight training over here and cardio over here. I can't remember which way. It doesn't matter. It can be on either side. Now, it said that 10 people do weight training three times a week. 14 do cardio training, and three people do neither. So we have to put our, our, our people who do neither here. Um, so let's take a look at our numbers. So if I take 27 minus 3, that gives me 24. Now if I take my numbers for weight training plus cardio, we're going to see if there's overlap. So I'm going to have 10 plus 14, which is equal to... 24. The numbers are the same. So what that tells me is it tells me there is no overlap because no one's doing both. It still adds up to 24. Well, there you go. 
So 10 people do weight training, 14 do cardio, and 3 do neither. We add them all together, 10 plus 14 plus 3, we get 27. So we have no intersection or union in this situation. So complete each statement with and or or. Okay? So looking at these, the set... The set of C and W consists of elements in the set C and the set W. The set C or W consists of the elements C or W. Let's highlight that one as well so we know what those are. So basically what we have is this equals and... Oh my goodness, what was I writing? Aardvark. And, and this equals or. Um, now, it's remember, to, or means I've got this or that, and they all count. Um, and means I have both. So it's that intersection, right? Okay. Let's keep going. More examples. Examples are good for practice. Correcting errors. Morgan surveyed the 30 kids in her math class about their eating habits. She found that, let's see, I like to do a little bit of this. She found that 18 ate breakfast. Five of those 18 also ate lunch. And there were three students who ate neither breakfast nor lunch. She wants to know how many ate lunch. So Tyler tried the problem. So he, let's see what Tyler did. He said C was the universal set of all the students in the class. He let B equal the set of students who ate breakfast, and he let L equal the set of students who ate lunch. Um, he had 18 eating breakfast, and five of those 18 also ate lunch. And then he figured this out. So his mistake is here is remember it's five of those 18. So this value, oops, I did not want to write with red. I wanted to write with this. This value doesn't take into consideration that these five have to be from that group as well. So he made a mistake. So we're going to fix that. So let's draw our Venn diagram. We're gonna have it like this. We have our breakfast and our lunch, right? And these, that's the total. Um, this is for his class. We know that um, five eat both, right? So if the breakfast in total is 18, that means that this needs to be 18 minus five, right? which equals 13, okay? Now, there were three that didn't eat anything, and the total was 30, right? So, I have, that's how I can figure out how many eat lunch, correct? Let's see, 13 plus five plus three equals, we'll figure out that number, 13 plus five plus three equals 21, right? So 30 minus 21 are the kids who eat lunch. So 30 minus 21 gives us nine. This is the kids who eat lunch, okay? So it should be a nine there. Now, he got the right answer, but I'm not sure what he did wrong because, um, well, he's gonna have too many kids, basically. He forgot it's just this number here that he did wrong. This should be a 13. He still correctly identified the number of kids who eat lunch. So that's good, Tyler. Okay. Let's try it. Oh, we're, are we done? Yes, we are. So, you know, a lot of it is, is figuring it out, using different ways to kind of approach it, and remembering that um, a Venn diagram can help you organize it. You have to think about the overlap so that you can actually solve 
for those missing regions, okay? So each element in a universal set only appears once in a Venn diagram. You can determine the number of elements in a universal set by counting the elements in each region. And each region represents something different. So um, this side here, this is elements in set A but not in set B or A but not B. This is the overlap. They're in both A and B, okay? This is just B, but not A. So elements in set uh, B, but not A. And then outside them is, um, let's do that one, um, is those that are not in set A or B. So it's that's where we have that prime, okay? So it's that disjoint set, or the complement, sorry. The union of two more sets has the following characteristics. It's indicated by the word or. Okay, oops, sorry, yeah. Um, indicated by the word or consists of all elements that are in at least one set, and it's represented by the entire region of the sets in a Venn diagram. Intersection, which we look like this, it's represented by and, and it only consists of elements that are common to all sets, and it's that area of overlap, okay? Number of un elements in the union of sets A and B can be cons calculated in two ways. We can use the principle of exclusion and inclusion using this so that we remember what we're doing there, ladies and gentlemen, folks, is we are subtracting the overlap, okay? And that prevents us from counting it twice. Or we can, that is not my highlighter, we can use this formula where basically we're adding up all the sections. So the sections where it's just A, sections where it's just B, and then the section where it's both A and B. Either way will get us the same answer, okay? Um, in, if sets A and B are disjoint, the following is true. Um, and, um, sorry, the union of A and B is equal to a plus B because the overlap is equal to zero. So if you're in your diagram, there's no overlap, you can just add A and B together to get your union, okay?